Ka, ka, quoth the raven, nevermore, said the great Edgar Allan Poe, or the wrestler said, quote the raven, nevermore. I don't know, you can say it however you wish. Either way, there were two games this month with Raven in the title, and I'm super confused. But here we have, from the creators of the excellent Curse of the Dead Gods, Raven's Watch, which is now entering Steam Early Access. Raven's Watch is an action roguelike where up to four players can come together to take down a nightmarish creature after a set number of days have passed. While waiting for the oncoming nightmare to arise, you'll grind out loot and grow stronger if you hope to stand a chance. The first thing I have to say about Raven's Watch is that I love the whole idea of fairy tale creatures coming together to defend the world. I've always been a sucker for putting a dark spin on children's stories, so needless to say, conceptually, I dig what the developer's going for. You won't get a ton of story here in the early access build, but I do like the concept, and I think there's a great deal of potential to tell a neat story. So I've now played Raven's Watch a bit solo, also with a second player, and then I had a third player as well, Barely Magic Mike. We tried to get Rose in for four players, but sadly, she was unable to connect. There seems to be a bug where after a certain amount of invites, the game just won't let one person connect. I don't know exactly what's going on here, but she couldn't even type in the room code. So unfortunately, that seems like one bug that will have to get ironed out. So what is Raven's Watch exactly? Well, it has a little bit of a Diablo feel to it and will also feel familiar to fans of any of the rogue games that are out there. After selecting a character, you and your party are whisked off to the Dark Hills, which is currently the only chapter available in Early Access, so do be aware of that. Players are dropped into a safe zone and immediately able to choose one upgrade. This safe area is also host to a Sandman creature who will sell you upgrades and items to help you on your run in exchange for Dream Shards. These shards are collected off of fallen enemies and they're also scattered across the map. You can break stuff to earn more of them. Your goal in the game is to essentially get as powerful as you can before the nightmare arrives, which usually takes around 30 minutes of real time. You do this by slaying random enemies who pop up all over the place, with side quests also being available along with hidden areas like caves and treasure boxes and magical fountains that will further add to your strengthening. Some of these side quests might have you collecting wood as one example and trying to build a house as strong as possible and then defend that house from demons. Collect those shards, bring them back to the Sandman, get strong stronger and stronger, gain levels as you go, that's the name of the game here. It's a grindy experience, but that's not a bad thing. I like grinding in games. So it sounds easy enough, right? Well, not always, thankfully. Each character in Raven's Watch feels pretty unique from one another, and they're all really fun to control. You have a character based off of Little Red Riding Hood as one example. She will randomly transform into the Big Bad Wolf, and it's really freaking awesome. You have Beowulf, a more brutish, powerful character. And then there's other characters like Aladdin that will need to be unlocked for six characters characters in total as of now. Characters have tons of different abilities, all attached to specific buttons, which are clearly displayed at the bottom of the screen. Trust me, it's a joy to experiment, and they all feel really cool, though of course you'll have some that you prefer over others. Characters have defensive options available and a dash, which can also be upgraded. Can I just say that this trend of dashing and causing damage is really cool? I fully support this. Even cooler, reach a high enough level and you'll unlock a character's ultimate ability. So yes, while this early access build may only have the one chapter, at least there are a good amount of characters to mess around with and try to level out. There's also an element of strategy in choosing which upgrades you prefer, which I quite enjoyed. One thing I have to say is that there can be a lot of stuff going on here. It's a little bit overwhelming on your first run and not a lot of built-in tutorials, so there is a manual on the main menu that you can read through to learn the game better, but I do feel like the developer could add some tutorials to the game itself and maybe that would help players better understand just exactly what their goal is. Just as you would expect, this is a rogue game after all. When you die, it's all the way back to the start. Yeah, that's always gonna sting regardless of the game. Thankfully, not all is lost as some upgrades do carry over, but I felt like I wasn't really getting all that much stronger from run to run in this particular title, so some balancing may still be in order. I'm a bit old school, I hate the idea of losing levels, but that's just me. Weirdly, Raven's Watch felt a bit tougher with friends, but obviously it's way more fun to play with a group. The revive system is interesting as well, where the team splits Raven's feathers that they can choose to use in order to be revived. If a partner can revive you before the countdown concludes, you can save yourself the feather, but it's not always easy when you're being swarmed by nightmarish enemies. Still, I like the revive system for the most part, as it did again add a bit of strategy and maybe some anxiety to each run too. There are also Raven teleport pads scattered across the map, so that makes it a lot easier to get back to the Sandman to upgrade before time runs out. Just a whole lot of Raven going on here. The question one should ask themselves is, 
Yes, there are reasons to keep playing, there are cool characters to experiment with, there's side quests to take on, but ultimately, is a single chapter worth buying in on early? And to that, I personally say, uh, not yet. Now, they are saying the final game will include three chapters, which is also not a ton, but they're going to be adding more and more characters, more quests, and honestly, they'll need to. I can appreciate that the map has a lot going on, but for me, there's only so many times I want to run the same map and area over and over again until I'm a little bit bored of it. Now, are there worse early access games to jump in on, however? Yes, absolutely, and the performance of this one is really great outside of that one connection issue that we experienced. The frame rates are smooth, the dark world is majestic to explore, it feels really great grim and, well, I don't have a better word here, nightmarish, with cool effects like the entire screen being drenched in a red haze as the nightmare approaches. The excellent visuals are also host to a gorgeous, horrific soundscape that sets the mood perfectly. So I love the visual style of this game, I think it sounds really good as well, but ultimately this is an early access title, and so you will be buying in on the hope that more and more gets added in a fairly timely fashion. And with a projected completion date of about a year from release of this early access build, you start to wonder if you can't just wait that year. There's much to like about Raven's Watch, though, in the early access. It looks great, it runs great, it plays really well, and has an awesome set of characters. But it is a bit light on content for now. There's those few characters to unlock, there are some quests to do, you can get stronger, but that's really it. You're stuck in one chapter. So my advice would be hold out for a bit, let some updates roll through, and eventually I think Raven's Watch becomes a very easy recommendation. <laughs> This is a sure skill to master. <laughs>